For the past couple of years, Samsung has released smartwatches to complement the use of our smartphones. From the first watch to hit the shelves, it never fails to give us something new in design, performance, and experience. Today, not only will we see the brand new Gear S2 in all its glory, but most importantly, we will see it in the eyes of a developer. Welcome guys to this new episode. I'm Kim, and this is Samsung Developers. First things first, what does the new Gear S2 have in store for us? Taking a look at it, it has a circular design and stainless steel body. Watch face and bands are customizable, and it also has a rotating bezel to maximize the circular design. To serve its users better, more apps from partners are available for download. It also has the wireless charging feature, so when it runs out of juice, just place it on the pad. Payment can be made via NFC just by holding the gear near the reader. The Gear S2, compared to its predecessors, works with the majority of Android devices, which run on Android 4.4 and above, with over 1.5 GB of RAM. To check those devices, go to the link in the description below. It also has an electronic SIM card or eSIM, so it can connect to 3G or LTE on its own. In developing both types of apps, there is a wide array of APIs that can make it easier and better. May it be web or native APIs? Most recent ones include network APIs like Bluetooth, NFC, and Secure Element, along with call and location-based APIs. As we all know, there are two types of apps for the gear, the standalone and companion apps. Standalone apps live by itself, meaning it doesn't need a host for it to run fully. Companion apps, on the other hand, connect to a smartphone and communicate through Bluetooth. Now, in developing companion apps, we have three SDKs to help you. First one is the accessory SDK that allows devices to connect to one another, enables the wearable device to use some of the functions of the host device, and relays information from the host to the wearable to keep you connected in the slim chance we are away from our phones. Next is the Rich Notification SDK, which adds the extra something in your notifications. Instead of just letting you know what you need to, it offers personalization, actionable items, and makes sure that they are easy on the eyes. Lastly, we have the Sensor Extension SDK that provides access to data gathered by sensors available on the wearable device. We highly recommend using the Tizen SDK to get sensor data from the wearable. In the course of developing an app, testing is the most crucial part. With that in mind, I'll be providing ways to open all testing avenues so that you can work on what you have. First, we have the Gear Emulator. You can find it within the Tizen SDK. Just create a new device and just start the emulator every time you need it. Now, that works for testing standalone apps. Testing companion apps has a different story. For this, we will set up the test environment. You'll need an actual host for this one. In the link below, download the zip file and it contains two APKs S Accessory Service Email.apk and SA System Providers for Email.apk. Install both APKs in that said order then run the emulator for Samsung Accessory app. In the app, it should say disconnected for now, since we have to fix up the emulator first. But before that, make sure that the Android Debug Bridge or ADB is installed and it is set on the path variable. Tizen SDK is running, host device should have internet connection, and Wi-Fi transport type is added to res slash xml slash service profile dot xml of your gear application. Moving on, make sure that the host device is connected to the PC via USB. Now, let me just open up the command prompt and type in adb d forward tcp colon 8230 tcp colon 
8230. This forwards commands to the only USB device with a specified port. Start the emulator and check back on your host device. Troubleshooting tip, if it still says disconnected, restart the emulator. Clear the data of Samsung Accessory Service over at the Application Manager, then repeat the said steps. Next testing avenue is the Remote Test Lab. With your Samsung account, you can borrow the Gear S2 paired with the host device. Here I'm using the Gear S2 paired with the Note 5, then hit Start to run the device. Last is the Wireless Target Test over Wi-Fi. This is done by connecting the Gear S2 using Wi-Fi and the PC serves as the host. Once both the PC and the wearable are connected to the same Wi-Fi network, get the IP address of the wearable to be used during the SDB connection. Over at the PC, open the terminal and type in SDB, connect, then the IP address of your Gear S2, Colon 26101. With this, we already have the SDB connection. And when it's time to install an app, just key in SDB, install, and the path to your TPK. You may refer to the link below for more details on SDB commands. Troubleshooting tip. Turn off Bluetooth and stay away from charging docks to reduce the interference with Wi-Fi. Summing up today's episode, the Gear S2 is the very first to cater both web and native apps. More APIs, more functionality, and a lot more fun to develop. Take advantage of the APIs and SDKs available to help you make the app better. We have three testing avenues. First is a gear emulator, next is a remote test lab, and testing over Wi-Fi. That wraps up our developer's preview and developing for the new Gear S2. You can check out developer.tizen.org for API references and code snippets, also over at developer.samsung.com for SDKs and more information. Now, for inquiries, please post your questions on the official forum at developer.samsung.com. Let us know what you want to learn about next in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to give a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to the Samsung Developers channel. Thanks for watching.